Yo, what's good my fellow Magic Knights? It is your boy Dan Man Vance back with yet another Black Clover Mobile video. Hope you guys have been enjoying the content. Uh, today we're actually going to be going over how to beat level 6 of Battle Gigas on, uh, with all the difficulty modifiers turned on. What team I'm using personally. There are definitely multiple teams you can use for this. Battle Gigas has been out literally forever in this game. So it, it stands to reason that there's like a million and one teams under the sun. This team works really well for me. Um, there's probably a more conventional team for the second part of this, but I just like how this team functions. So I'm just kind of sticking to it right now. Before we go into the Battle Gigas um, mission, let's actually talk about the shop real quick and see what rewards they have. So guys, we'll look at some of the rewards here. Um, usually there's only one of these in the shop. This time we got two of them, so that's very, very good. They're giving us better rewards already. Um, they've added in skill upgrade materials, which is also very, very helpful. You can see I got those first. Those are like my first priorities. Um, I've been buying the stamina. So, guys, what I want to say is don't don't waste your points on the stamina. Like, it, it's kind of a trap. So, basically, all three of these different things right here are all 700 stamina. No, this one's 7,000. This one's 7,000. I'm sorry. Or no. This one's 3,500. This one's 3,500. This one's, this one's 700. But you can do this one every single day. I would say don't get so caught up, you can see I already bought some of it, but don't get so caught up in doing these two right here because like stamina is not the hardest resource in the game to get. Stamina comes with like every event, you know, they give us stamina boxes, they drop us free stamina in the in the mail, They like stamina is everywhere. Do not spend your points on the stamina. I've only spent my points on the stamina because I was desperate for more. Um, so basically, I don't, have, I don't have a lot of these right now because I'm kind of like not summoning right now, I'm waiting for Noelle to come so I can like summon on her banner instead and obviously I will replenish my rare and SR uh, crystals, but as of right now, I do not have those. So I have been personally using these to fill the stamina, but I gotta say, I really just sat back and thought about it today and I was like, yeah, this just isn't worth it. The stamina, no, I, I can just wait for it to reload. Your main priority is gonna be these two things, obviously. These two right here, uh, talents for sure. These are a good next choice right here because there's only three of these and these are easy to get anyway. But like these three right here are not a bad idea. This one's LR? Yes, this one's LR, so definitely get that one. The ones that you can get multiple of though, they're like lower tier, so it doesn't really matter as much. So these two, this one, this one, these two right here, and these tickets right here. These are the tickets that I was talking about that give you five inventory spaces um, whenever you use them, and you can choose to use them on your weapon inventory or your gear inventory or your um or your what is the other word I'm looking for? Your skill page inventory. I have been using it on gear inventory personally because when you farm gear, um, if you get all the way to the maxed out amount, of, or if you have, if you have like, say you have 800 slots for gear and you have 750 slots filled right before you do a gear farm, you forget to fill, like, clear out your gear. If you go and do that gear farm, once you get those extra 50 pieces of gear, your farm stops. It's not like a, it's not like a, the farm keeps going and it just overstocks in your account, and lets you deal with it later. Like no, it will stop your farm. And I've had that happen to me one billion million plus one times. So I want to go ahead and get my inventory maxed out as much as possible. This is 50 free inventory spaces right here, guys. Just so you know, my inventory. My inventory for weapons is at 955. You can only go up to 1500. So those extra 50 spots are about to put me at 1005, and then I'm and then I'm less than like 500 because it costs 100 black crystals to do this, which is insane just for five spaces, or it costs one ticket, right? So I need I have it listed down somewhere else. I'll find it later on in the video and talk about it, but maybe. But <laughs> yes, I'll finally be under the point where I need. Um, I need less than 5,000 spaces left in my inventory, which is very exciting. And uh, I was willing to, I was willing to kind of like stop summoning for a little bit. That's what I was planning to do at first, and then just kind of use my black crystals on other things in the game, and that was going to be one of the other things. But then they introduced those tickets as soon as I had like even thought about doing that. And then from that point on, I was like, yeah, I literally cannot use my black crystals on that now, unless it gets to a point where they give us the tickets so infrequently. And I have so much gear at a certain point that I have to use black crystals to boost my inventory. That's a different story. But until then, we're, we're fine for now. So let's go ahead and hop in and look at the team. So guys, right here, I have Mary Leona, uh, Mimosa, Season 9, Kahono, Season 11, Season 10, 11. Yes. And then I have Yami here, Season 8. Now, this team is, is uh, kind of like self-explanatory. Uh, 
Mary Leona is going to be here for providing mana skin, giving an extra 30% damage reduction, also giving um, immunity to all status debuffs so that I can't get stunned during this event. Then Yami is going to be here all for damage. Like Yami is the main damage dealer. If you guys watched my video on Shadow Battlefield, which please go watch that video because I was the first person on YouTube to put a guide out for that. So definitely run that one up. I'm very proud of that one. Um, this Kahono here actually does very phenomenal offensive buffing. So I am going to make use of that and make sure that Yami is doing the ample damage that he needs to do because without without a buffer. Yami's damage is somewhat mid in this mission. Like it's still decent damage, but it's like mid. It's not enough to like get through as fast as you need to. Let's see, Mimosa. I I've been using her. I didn't. I didn't know what her actual skills were. Let's see, Mimosa grants 15% of all of her own HP as HP recovery to the ally with the lowest HP on her skill one, which is a single target. Her skill two is not an attack at all. 40% chance to remove HP recovery reduction status from an ally. Grants the ally 100% of own maximum HP as HP recovery. Dispels all DOT effects. From the ally and grants the ally a defense penetration buff level three for two turns so that's why mimosa's here mimosa's here because she provides additional offensive buffs um her ultimate resurrects an ally at 60 percent of hp and grants an ally status ailment removal that skill doesn't really get used here mimosa typically dies before i can even get to a point of using her ultimate, or i can use her ultimate first turn obviously there's no point nobody's dead um then applies a buff to your partner grants your partner mage sp plus two and 40 percent chance to grant partner mage sp plus one on her um on her combo skill then her passive is grants all allies sp plus one buff every turn and then at five star grants all allies sp plus one buff and upon dying grants all allies 100 percent of own max hp is hp recovery and then also her unique passive if all allies are green at the start of the battle grants invulnerability to the ally with the highest attack all attack for one turn so i didn't even know she was giving yami all attack it doesn't really matter yami's always obviously yami's always fine in the first turn but yami's shield kind of keeps them defensively okay then this team here is actually uh kind of like a super defensive uh let the boss kill itself kind of comp so we have charmy for constant heals then we also have noel in here for heals as well we pull noel up as well too because if y'all didn't know i was reading that off the wiki i did not use these characters too too, too much um skill one inflicts barrier immunity on the enemy for two turns grants sp plus one to the ally with the highest attack if you use her skill one nice then uh skill two noel fills or removes two instances of continuous damage from all allies if continuous damage is removed from an ally for every instance of continuous damage removed grants them six percent of all max hp is continuous hp recovery for one turn so that's actually pretty good then also releases abnormal status from the designated ally so whoever i choose but i the second phase i actually auto battle because this team it, it runs well on its own the one thing that i'd say you want to make sure you're doing with this team if you're going to use it if you're going to try this comp at all the one thing that i will say with this team is make sure that when you set up the auto battle for this one make sure they're only using their ultimates and their skill twos you do not want them using the combo skill because the combo skills do not have as good team-wide effects usually combo skills have better like partner effects but team wide effects typically your actual skills and your um your actual combo your skill twos and your ultimates are usually going to be it for you so that's kind of how i had to set up their auto battle but the first phase i actually just do that one manually but you can see here even though he's at 330 combat rating um i am at 240 on this team i'm at 251 on this team this team still clearly uh obviously can auto battle it and also just kind of going i don't i don't know what the requirements are but if you guys do all these requirements right here the requirements will either affect you in phase one or phase two this one's phase two today so let's see how it goes um the uh all of the requirements they'll give you an additional 150 uh medals so if you can get this right here is a guaranteed 450 medals every day then whatever you get from the actual mission reward is another at least uh what's 27 times 381 another 81 so that's at least 500 a day guaranteed from this if you can do this on level six with all the modifiers turned on so we're gonna go ahead and hop in and give this a run a try and i'm gonna turn on my hp food because i like to play it safe and i am i am practically 100 000 combat power below the requirement but let's get to it all right first turn he's gonna nearly kill everybody so kohono's health Kahono's health is only at halfway, which is fine. If Kahono's health is like somewhere in the 25% range, or like maybe like even like 
right here, then Kahono's probably going to die right after this turn. So if your Kahono's health is lower than this at the start of the fight, you probably already lost it. But like, my Kahono just has, like, my units just don't have the best gear they could have. Like, Black Asta is the best geared mage in my account, and he's not even that well geared, if I say, if I said so personally. So it's just like, gear is a hurdle that most people are already kind of like jumped over whereas with me i'm spreading out my grind experience on all my characters so like that's what i'm working towards so yami we just use his skill one because we want to save his ultimate up keep him at eight out of eight sp the entire time so we can keep his shield for as long as possible um you can see he has two stacks of uh opening aria already and also you want to make sure that um you want to make sure that you're building up his skill one as well so that whenever he gets all of his four instances of damage if you need to let it off you can pop his ultimate and finish the boss off most of the time i usually don't even get to use the ultimate yami just kind of kills beforehand um with mario leona first turn we always use our skill two so we can give ourselves mana skin that's going to give us our immunity and our defense uh, our extra defense because we don't want anybody to get stunned from battle gigas because if you get stunned by battle gigas oh dude it's wraps then we got the extra defense penetration on Yami from Mimosa's skill there, so that's good. Kahono lives. We definitely need this second buff right here from Kahono. That's why I said your run is kind of botched if Kahono dies right there. But now we're going to use Yami's skill one again. You can see it's hitting much harder this time. The first time it did like 71k, I believe. Then next time it did uh, 100, 300k. And right there, that move right there, from my experience, that always hits Yami. That always hits Yami. It probably targets the highest attack mage on the team. So it always hits Yami. Kahono lives for another turn here. And I can get one more buff out. Now, Kahono skill one, if you guys remember me explaining in the uh, Shadow Battlefield video. No, uh, Kahono skill one is going to give a 40% all attack boost to the highest attack mage. So then we use Yami skill one, because Yami's not built out yet. He's at three, two stacks, yeah. Um, we're going to use Yami skill one and see what we get. We just did 430k damage this time, so that's much better. And we're definitely winning this phase because Metal Gigas just got his ultimate. I can actually revive Kahono if I really want to, which I, it doesn't really matter. I don't think Kahono gets another buff out this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's not even going to get another buff out. We're going to use Mary Lee on his ultimate because he's burning. It's not going to do much damage at all, though. And then Yami skill one is just going to wipe the wet rest of this man's plate. Easy peasy. All right, cool. You saw, but you saw all the boss multipliers or modifiers are actually on stage two. So this isn't even like the hard part just yet. Let's see how this one treats my second team. But yeah, the first run is like super, the first half of it is like super simple. It's literally, it's literally preserve your team. Honestly, not even preserve your team. Cause you saw Kahono died at the end. Mimosa was almost dead. If Mimosa would have died, literally everybody on my, um, literally everybody on my team would have, I'm gonna auto battle this. Everybody on my team would have gotten 100% HP like back on that. So now it begins. We give everybody the shield. Cool. Battle Gigas automatically does some damage to himself. Easy peasy. Charmy's going to put us up with the constant heals now. Vonchus is going to give us extra fortification. Noel eats a big hit there, but Battle Gigas eats a bigger hit back. So I guess Zora puts the shield on whoever has the lowest HP, which is, which is pretty smart. Um, so guys, right now we're still taking a pretty sizable amount of damage. What I would say is we just kind of need to let those buffs keep stacking on each other and uh, eventually we'll be good. So kind of a double-edged sword. I don't know what the modifiers are for today, but typically I don't get hit this hard in this run, but you can see Charmy and uh, Noel are working very well in combo to keep everybody alive. I usually don't get hit hard this hard in this run, but like this getting, getting hit harder actually is playing to my advantage because this typically takes a, that's usually how hard I'm getting hit the entire time in this second half. But I don't know what passive the boss has on today, what Battle Gigas has on today, but it's actually making this run go by a lot faster because since he's getting so much damage out, he's doing a actual, like quite monumental amount of damage to himself right now. Yeah, okay, yeah, we're all super like tanked out now. We just gotta wait for Zora to use his skill too once again. And guys, you can kind of see now why I'm saying you don't wanna use those combo skills because one, the effects that you're gonna get from the ultimates are gonna be way better than what you get from the combo skills. And two, the combo skills typically buff like the character beside the character who uses the combo skill. Whereas if I'm constantly using the character's regular skills, there's a lot higher of a chance that all my characters are buffing all each other. You know what I'm saying? So you can see this team is working out very well. Everybody's literally full health right now. And this team is not 100K below, but this team is literally 90K below the combat power requirement and is actually working like beautifully. So we got another ult right here. 
Battle Geeks takes a big chunk of damage right there because Zora had his ultimate on. I think Zora's, let me pull up Zora's uh, skills real quick so I can tell y'all the percentage of damage that's getting shot back at Battle Gigas. Because I think, I think the ultimate is 330%. Where's Zora? He's right here. I was gonna say, he's the last character in the entire list. Um, Zora's skill one, Reflective Trap, is only reflecting 150% of damage and it's only gonna be on one person. Um, Zora's skill two, Reflective Trap, is going to be, let's see, gives you 100% debuff immunity, so I didn't even notice that. 100% debuff immunity from Zora's skill two, then inflicts SP minus one on all enemies, which I don't think that really matters for this, because once his bar is all the way full, he's gonna drop his ultimate move, however, anyway. Um, inflicts magic attack reduction level one on all enemies for two turns. Ah, oh, so that's was also another thing that's doing it. Then grants reflective trap level two. Reflective trap level two is gonna reflect 225%. And another thing about Zora's reflect that's super incredible is the fact that it reduces the damage you eat by 20% as well. So that's also giving us a little bit of extra survivability. Zora is such a versatile debuffer, it's insane. This man is taking away SP. This man is giving you damage reduction. This man is making the enemies eat back the damage that they're sending your way. Like Zora is phenomenal for this uh, run right here. Okay, that wasn't enough quite to kill him, but if Vaughn just gets hit pretty hard right here, then we're probably looking good this turn. We're, we're honestly, we're getting so close to the point that like a regular hit could possibly take him out but then um zora's ultimate reflection trap is actually not 300 330 it's actually 300 and also with zora's ultimate 60 percent chance to grant an ally increased defense level five for two turns and that's increasing your defense by 245 percent but if you uh get it to level five and that's going to be a 100 percent chance to increase designated allies defense by um 245 percent but guys, yeah, literally, easy peasy run. That was that was Battle Gigas, man. Like I like I said, I I I auto battle the second stage. I run the actual first stage, but this is the team that I'm using. And guys, again, I just want to say, not that I'm like better than anybody. No, none, none of that. That's stupid, right? Nobody's better than anybody. Everybody's like equal, and everybody just has the potential to do things, right? But some people do things, some people don't, right? But what I want to say is, guys. You can see that my team's gear requirement is much, much, much lower. Do not be scared to try these really hard missions just because your combat power requirement is so much lower than it because you can end up getting really good rewards. And if you're scared to try, you'll never know if you even got a chance to get in those rewards. Um, you can see here, this team is 80K below what I need. This team is 90K below what I need. But the team that's literally weaker can auto battle because it's set up properly for this. This team, I tried to set it up for auto battle, but I don't know a way to do that because I think if you set this one up for auto battle, I believe Kahono is gonna start buffing like random units instead of buffing Yami specifically. And that's the one reason why I can't do that. Mimosa will probably target her skills towards the ally with the lowest health, which would be Kahono, and then Kahono will probably just target randomly. So that's why I have to do the first stage myself. But other than that, yeah, no, this team does an exceptional job. Um, the only thing about this team I would say that could really mess you up, if there's like a passive on phase two that disables recovery, this team doesn't work out too well because the whole point of it is to keep constantly healing and, and reflecting damage. But yeah, guys, check this out. Check out the Shadow Battlefield video as well. That is your boy, Dead Man Vince. I hope that y'all enjoyed. I need to edit this up and get ready for a stream. Peace out.